Lesson 11.3, measure angles, draw angles. It's extremely important. You saw 10.1, 10.2, 10.3, and the first two videos of this chapter 11, which are linked in the description. Otherwise, you might become lost or confused. In video 11.2, we learned that angles are measured in degrees. We can use a protractor to measure the degrees of an angle or draw an angle. This is a picture of a compass, and this is a picture of a protractor. A compass is a tool used to draw circles, curved lines, and to measure the distance between points. And a protractor is a tool used to measure an angle in degrees or draw an angle to a certain amount of degrees. There are two scales around the curve of a protractor. There's an outside scale, and there's an inside scale. And the outside scale is used to measure angles facing left. We use this outside scale starting here. This would be the zero mark, and it goes 10, 20, 30, 40. See? And the inside scale is used to measure angles facing to the right. So we would start here on the inside and say 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and so on. And the straight edge is marked in inches on the outside and centimeters and millimeters on the inside. So on a protractor, this line right here would be zero degrees on this left side for left facing angles. So the angles would open to the left like that. And this line right here would be zero degrees it's on the right side for right-facing angles that open towards the right. And there's a hole as the center point to line up with the vertex of the angle. We can see 90 degrees is directly in the middle, isn't it? To measure an angle, we line up the center point of the protractor. That would be this hole right here in the center with the vertex of the angle. And we line up this ray KL with the zero mark at the end of the protractor on the right side. And the angle faces right, so we're gonna use the inside scale. And we line up this vertex with the center point, and then we line up this ray with this zero line right here. See that? And if we line it up correctly, we can see if this is zero, that's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 degrees. And we find where the ray intersects with the inside scale. It intersects at 60 degrees, so this angle measures 60 degrees. So do you see how we lined up the vertex with the center point and this end of the ray, the arrow end, with this zero line? If that's 10, that's zero. See? Do you see that? We can line it up. It's 60 degrees. When we see the little M with the angle symbol and then these letters, it means the measure of angle ABC. And remember, the vertex is always the middle letter. We need to find the angle measure of each angle. Here we have angle ABC. We need to find the measure of angle ABC. So we use our protractor and we're gonna line up the vertex B with this center point. Okay, so let's do that. And because this angle is open on the left side, we're going to start with zero on the left side of the protractor. We're going to use the outside scale. And we can see it's greater than a right angle, so it can't be 40 degrees, the inside measure. It must be greater than 90 we can see it's 100. 
40 degrees. It lines up right there. So we have our vertex lined up with the center point. We have the end of the ray over here with the arrowhead lined up at the zero mark. And we can see the ray goes through 140. The measure of angle ABC is equal to 140 degrees. We need to find the measure of angle PQR. We can see it's opening to the right, so we're going to use zero on the right-hand side of our protractor. We're going to line point Q, the vertex, up with this center. And then we're going to line up this part of the ray with the zero part on the right-hand side. So here's the zero on the right-hand side. We have it lined up with the vertex at the center point of the protractor. And we follow the ray and we see it's going through 40 and 140. But we know that this is less than a right angle, so it can't be the 140. We're going to use the inside scale. It's 40 degrees. So using some common sense and seeing that this angle is much greater than a right angle, it must be 140, and seeing that this one is less than a right angle, it must be 40. We can also use a protractor to draw an angle of a given measure. It's telling us to draw angle XYZ with a measure of 27 degrees. So we think we can draw the angle facing right or left, it doesn't matter. I'm going to draw it so it's facing to the right. And we draw ray YZ using the straight edge of the protractor. We can use this straight edge to draw a ray. We need to make sure the ray is long enough to see the scale. So if that's going to be our center point, do you think that's long enough? Or should we have made it longer? Because we can't even see it sticking out of there, can we? So we need to make this a little longer so we can see it. Now we can see it sticking out and we can see that it's lined up with zero. See that? So if I lay this like this, we line this up with the zero mark and there's our vertex in the center point. And then we label the endpoint Y and a point somewhere on the ray as Z. We could put it here, we could put it here. It just needs to be somewhere on the ray. So we line up the endpoint right here with the center point of the protractor and the ray with the zero degree line like this. So it's lined up really nice with the zero degree line and with the vertex at the center point. I'm going to use the same scale as we used. If this is 0 and that's 10, we need to make a 27 degree angle. We know we're going to use the inside scale when we draw our angle. So, putting the center on the endpoint of our ray, I'm going to line this up with the 0 mark right here. And we're trying to make a 27 degree angle using the inside because that's 0, 10, 20. So the middle line right here would be 25 and we need 27. So we go 26, 27 and we put a mark where 27 would be. It would be two more than this middle 25 line. See that? If that's 20 and that's 30, then that must be 25. So that's 26 and 27. Okay, we put a mark there. Then we use a straight edge to draw a ray from point Y through the mark we made, like this. And we just use the straight edge part. And we can label point X. We can label the point where we made our little mark or anywhere on this ray. And we have angle X, Y, Z, and it's 27 degrees inside the angle. We know it would be less than a right angle, so we know it would be an acute angle, wouldn't it? Drawing and measuring angles are alike because we line up the ray to the zero degree mark on the protractor, 
and use the scale to mark or read the angle measure. Make sure to use the correct scale. Make sure you're supposed to be using the inside one or the outside one. So remember, right angles measure 90 degrees. They have the little box like this. Acute angles are less than 90 degrees. They're less than a right angle. Obtuse angles are greater than 90 degrees. They're greater than a right angle. And straight angles are 180 degrees. And we learned about this in video 11.2. If you haven't learned this, there's the link in the description so you can watch it. It's telling us to use a protractor to draw the angle. The angle is going to be 95 degrees, so we think it will be greater than a right angle because a right angle is 90 degrees, isn't it? So it's going to be open more than a right angle. So the first thing we need to do is draw a ray. We need to make sure the ray is long enough so that this side of it sticks out past our protractor. We line up the end point of our ray with the little circle in the center point of our protractor. We line this part up with the zero and we look for 95. Because this is zero, that's 10, 20, 30, 40. So we're going to be using the outside of the protractor. It's opening to the left, so we're going to use the outside. We need to find 95 degrees. Look at we have 90 and 100, so this middle point right here, this middle mark, is 95. We can put a little mark there, and now we take our protractor, and we can go like this, or we can go like this, and we make a straight line using the straight edge of the protractor. And we're actually making a ray because it's going to meet right here. That's going to be the vertex of our angle. We've now made a 95 degree angle. We could even label this with capital letters and some points, couldn't we? We could call this angle ABC or JKL or anything we want as long as the vertex is the middle letter. If we called this angle ABC and we wrote it like this, but we put A over here, that would be okay, right? Could we put C here? No, because if B is in the middle, that's going to be the vertex, right? So always make sure the middle letter is the vertex letter. And the length of the rays do not determine the size of the angle. We have this circle here. That's a 30 degree angle. And if we look at this circle outside of it, that's still a 30 degree angle. And this bigger one, that's still a 30 degree angle. It doesn't matter how long the rays are. These are all 30 degree angles. And even if we come out here, that's a 30 degree angle. If the rays are really, really long, making an angle in a circle, it just means the circle's bigger, doesn't it? Take a look at this angle. Is this angle measure 70 degrees or 110 degrees? It's at the center point of the protractor. It's lined up with the zero and it's going up here and it's in between 60 and 80 and it's in between 120 and 100. So is this a 70 degree angle or is this a 110 degree angle? Well, if you said a 70 degree angle, you're correct because it's less than a 90 degree angle. So it can't be 110. This is an acute angle. We can see it's less than a right angle. It must be 70 degrees. And it's facing left, so we use zero on the left as the outside scale. It's less than a right angle, so it can't be 110. We know it's 70 degrees. If we can't see the vertex of an angle to be able to measure it, like if we had this ray and this ray and something was blocking it and it said, what's the measure of that angle? Well, we could extend the lines of the ray until they do intersect and make a vertex. 
we can get a straight edge, so I might not be perfect because I don't have one in my hand, and we can extend them like this until they do make a vertex, and then we can use that as our point to measure our angle. So just remember, you can extend lines to help you measure angles. So be careful when measuring or drawing your angles. You want to make sure you're using the correct scale, the inside or the outside that you, sh you should be using. So just remember, if it's opening to the left side like this, we're going to use zero on the left side. If it's opening to the right, we're going to use the zero on the right side, okay? Our next lesson, 11.4, we're going to join and separate angles. We're going to find measures of angles that are separated into parts. So I hope I'll see you there, and I hope you're having a great day. Bye.